Hello, and welcome to my journey back to fitness. So almost two years ago on the dot, I had a baby, the most wonderful thing in my life. But it also made things a lot harder when it came to my fitness and nutrition. It made it so challenging that I actually had to pick between the two, and I picked nutrition. Mm -hmm. That was mostly because it was the easiest one to do, and it was also because my daughter wakes up at like 5, 5.30. So trying to get a workout before going to work and starting my day just wasn't feasible. And there's no way in hell after a long day that I'm gonna go to the gym. I'm just being real with myself. You might be able to do it, but I can't. So this is me trying to use the few mornings I have per week to try to get back into my fitness. And I'm gonna bring you along with me. I'm hoping that I can use this as a teaching lesson on what it's like to start from ground zero, no matter what that means for you, and find a way to climb back up to a healthy level when it comes to your fitness. Now, I'm not gonna do anything crazy. I'm actually gonna treat this like an experiment. So there might be some times where I fail miserably and I'm gonna bring you along for that. And there's gonna be some times where I succeed or have insights based on this new perspective in this new part of my life. All right, let's get started. So today what I've decided to do is focus on just squats and push-ups, and do as many rounds as I can before my daughter wakes up, which will probably be in the next 10 to 15 minutes. So that was what we're gonna do. Now this is called a goblet squat. If you've never heard of it, it's basically just holding a weight in front of you like this. It can be a kettlebell. It could be a dumbbell, it could be your dog. It really doesn't matter. The reason I like this squat so much is it's limited equipment. You could pick up a kettlebell or a dumbbell pretty cheap and it focuses on a safe, deep squat. It's also a good way to see how low you're going. So I'm going elbows to thighs. You can go lower by widening your stance a little bit more. I'm actually surprised I have this squat depth still, but I am getting very fatigued already. So that's one thing I've noticed is that I have virtually no stamina and my ability to recover after an exercise is pretty bad. All things to be expected. And the hardest part about this entire thing is just trying not to be ashamed of myself. Like in all honesty, just, you know, I'm constantly comparing where I'm at now to where I used to be, which is a totally unfair comparison considering my life was literally like completely different before I had a kid. And even, you know, now that I have a office nine to five job, even that's completely different than working in a gym. I mean, I maybe took for granted the fact that after I was done training my clients, I could literally just start working out. I also only worked four to five solid hours a day. And then the rest of the time I used for research, study, generating new clients and working out. So in cooking, meal prepping, it's a completely different lifestyle. So how I've organized these sets and reps is to honestly just do as many as I can safely. So the number's gonna change every time. Today, I'm not worried about keeping track of how many sets I do, how many reps I do. It's kind of more like a time-based thing. I'm trying to do two things really well. I'm trying to keep my form intact. I'm trying to push myself a little bit with the reps as long as they're done safely. And I'm trying to be mindful of getting enough rest in between. When you're just getting started back on a routine, the only thing that's important is that you do something. I don't even think it's important to track what you're doing at this point. Because the more you pile on things that you have to be responsible for and track, the more it becomes a burden the harder it is to be consistent. And that is always something that you can focus on once you get a lot more momentum and you're doing it more consistently. So again, if you're just starting off and maybe you want to start going to a gym, just focus on getting to the gym. Like honestly, like waking up or picking a time during the day and just going. And then honestly, I would pick your favorite exercises. If you don't have favorites, pick ones that you think look doable, pick machines. You know, you don't have to go to the barbell go to the dumbbells. You don't have to do any free weight stuff. Go to the machines. Like literally just go to every machine that's like in a row and just do that exercise and just do it as long as you can commit to being at the gym. If that's 20 minutes, if it's 30 minutes, great. Just do that. You know, one thing they don't tell you about being a parent is that every time your kid gets sick, you're like five days away from getting sick yourself. I've never been more sick in my life since my daughter's been born, specifically in the like last year. And that's not, and that's in combination with me just not being healthy. Like not working out is terrible for your immune system. I wasn't eating the highest quality foods. I was so focused on how many calories instead of the quality of my calories. And I have a terrible nighttime binge eating problem. Like no joke, I will just eat food because I like to eat while I watch a show to wind down at night. And it's not even something that I'm really that interested in tackling, which has, had, has been kind of like an interesting lesson in psychology. But I have thought a lot about it. And one of the things that I realized is the reason why it's so hard to stop is because that's the one time during the day where I get to spend 
time with myself doing what I want to do. And in some cases, eating. Like if my daughter's in a really bad mood and she's not eating her dinner, me or my wife have to manage that instead of eating dinner ourselves. I was also only eating one meal a day, so my appetite would try to compensate at night. Like there's actual like science behind that. So again, it's not something I'm gonna tackle right now, but I'm hoping that when I start working out more and I start regulating things, and I'm gonna go back to intermittent fasting, which is at least two meals a day, maybe a snack in between, that I'll regulate a little bit better. We'll see though, stay tuned. All right, second set of push-ups. Oh, I'm getting a cramp in my thigh, wonderful. You know, the one of probably the hardest things to do during this journey is to not be judgmental of myself. One, that's really easy for me to do. I'm a very judgmental person when it comes to myself. I tend to have a little bit more empathy for other people, which is kind of crazy. Like if you think about it, being nicer to other people than you are to yourself seems kind of odd, like when you say it out loud, but uh, that's just something that I, I've noticed about myself. But that's definitely another goal is to not judge the process, like to try to be as unbiased during this entire thing. Like when I was doing my push-ups, I just had a judgmental thought of like, wow, you're only doing 15. You used to bang out like 20, 30 in a row, no problem. And that's probably the hardest part about any self-improvement journey is it's like, there's something in your head, there's a judge, there's some person that's, you know, it's probably not even yourself. It's probably someone from your past or, you know, maybe it was a coach or a parent or whatever that like kind of put that voice in your mind. Cause I don't think you're necessarily born with that. Or if you are, it only develops because of somebody in your life who perpetuated that persona. But yeah, it's like those, while I'm doing push-ups, I'm thinking, oh wow, you only did 15. So the way I'm combating that thinking is that life is no longer mine. My fitness life before having a kid, before being married, before having a you know office nine to five job, that's a life I don't live anymore. And that's not a life I'm gonna probably ever go back to. So to think that th what I'm doing now needs to compare to that, is insane. So I try to tell my judgmental self that like, hey, you have no experience here. You have to reset yourself and we have to set new standards. And I think that applies to everyone's life because your life is just different phases of you, right? And your situation changes. You know, maybe not a lot of you have ever worked in a, do it in a gym or had kind of like a part-time schedule and had more free time. It doesn't really matter. The point is, is that each part of your life requires a different version of you or a modified version of you to keep things like your health, your nutrition, your fitness all in check. So just something I'm thinking about. I think this is set three of squats. It feels like I've done 15. So on that last set of squats, I did five or six more reps than I did the first two sets. And that was simply because I was just feeling good. Like I noticed I wasn't fatiguing at my usual 15, so I just kept going. And as long as you're doing that safely, I think that's probably a good way to push limits, especially if you're using a weight that isn't the heaviest. It might be fatiguing, but it's not the heaviest. And you'll notice that like, even on your first day at the gym, by your second set, you might have enough in the tank to do a, a few more reps on your third set. And you might be thinking, I'm on my third set. Wouldn't I be declining at this point? And in some cases, yes, but there's two things that are involved with that. The first is, are you getting enough rest in between sets? Most people rush their rest because they kind of feel like it's a waste of time or they get anxious and they want to just get to the next thing. Resting in between sets is very important for the longevity of your workout. It's also very important for being able to get high quality reps every single time. Now, if you're doing a very specific program where it's like 30 minutes minimum rest and it's designed by somebody who knows what they're doing, then by all means take less rest. But as somebody in the gym who doesn't yet know what they're doing, I think it's important to take appropriate rest breaks. So what's an appropriate rest break? Right now I'm talking to you, it's a little bit labored, it's a little bit hard to talk because I'm still recovering. But what I start to notice is I'm not catching my breath as quickly. I'm starting, my muscles are starting to recover a little bit better. And so when you feel like you could do another set just as effectively as before, then do it. I honestly think in the beginning, when you're just starting off, and you have pretty much no experience or you've taken a long time off like a me, that you should take as much rest in between your sets as you need and not worry about getting that next set in. Because in the beginning, quality is more important than quantity because quantity is going to scale no matter what as you get more fit. So focusing on quality at the very beginning is my recommendation. It's 5.30, my daughter isn't awake yet, knock on wood. Usually she wakes up between 5 and 5.30, so I'm pretty lucky that I'm still able to do my workout. All right, set three of push-ups. I think it's set three, I don't know. I'm okay, Aria, I'm just working out. I know this is weird for you to see because I don't do this anymore, but I'm just doing push-ups and squats, maybe. Okay, down. So when I was doing those push-ups, I just had another thought in my mind, like, 
you're just doing push-ups and squats. Like, what's that going to do for you? And it was another good exercise in telling myself that person is a judge from my past when I was living a different life. And I have to start coaching myself that not only is that voice wrong, but it's also about convincing myself that what I'm doing is better than what I was doing. So even though I'm just doing one or two exercises, squats and push-ups, looking at the positive. I think so many times we take our negative thoughts and we don't challenge them. At least I know I don't. And the more that I challenge my negative thoughts, the more insignificant they become. So like that scenario, oh, you're just doing push-ups and squats. Yes, but squats are one of the best exercises you can do. So you picked one of the best exercises to do, positive. Push-ups, one of the best upper body exercises you can do. It's not just good for your chest, it's good for your core. And your core literally stabilizes your entire body. When you look at the situation and the lifestyle that I live, it was actually really smart to pick just two exercises and do as many as I could, because I was gonna get a lot of sets and reps, and I'm bound to a certain amount of time. That time is unknown, because it's when my daughter wakes up, which could be any minute now, and it's already been about 30 minutes, so I'm pretty stoked that I've gotten this far. When you start to stack all those positives against that one negative thought, that one negative thought seems really insignificant. And maybe it's just me, you know, maybe I just have a lot of negative thoughts and maybe you're watching this going, dude, I don't think like that. More props to you then. You've got, you've got a lot of good stuff going for you. But if you are having those negative thoughts, I recommend challenging them with the positive side of things. And if you don't know what the positives are, then research them, you know, or ask somebody who knows about fitness, about the thing that you're trying to achieve, whatever self-improvement is. Seek out that information because the more positive perspectives you stack up, the more a ammo you have for when those negative thoughts do come. And then you're just literally like fighting your negative thoughts every single time and they stop trying to bother you because they're like, I can't win. That's my theory anyway. I'm not a psychologist, that's just my theory. All right, more squats. Thankfully I haven't gotten to the point where I feel like I'm gonna vomit. So on that last set of squats, usually I talk right after and start saying something. I was so out of breath that I had to like spend at least 20 seconds just catching my breath. So before I did that last set of squats, the thought that I had was, I don't wanna do this anymore. And normally I would say, try to fight that. Try to fight that thought to push it. One more set, one more rep. But honestly, I don't think that strategy is smart for somebody who's just starting off. I think when your body tells you like, hey, I'm done, just listen to it. And the reason is to keep the longevity of your workouts, if you keep fighting your body's natural cues to stop, then the next time you go to work out, you're gonna have that muscle memory, you're gonna have that mental memory, and it's going to fight against your willingness to actually go to the gym. So in the beginning, when you're just starting off and you're building momentum and consistency, I think it's better to just listen to those cues. Because again, this is a lifelong thing. Like we're not trying to get fit in 20 days. And if you wanna build healthy habits, you have to tap into your body's natural sort of defense against doing more than it wants to do, which goes completely against guys like David Goggins that are always telling you to like push your physical limits. And that's great and everything, like when you're at that stage. But if this is your first time in the gym in a long time, or maybe ever, I don't think going the David Goggins route is the best strategy right now. Maybe down the road, for sure. If you wanna go down that route, that route, go for it. But right now, like, just be happy with the fact that you got to the gym, you worked out as long as you did, and then save some for the next workout. Trust me, the psychology of that is so much more powerful than trying to push yourself at every workout. All right, that being said, I'm gonna end my workout. I'll see you later.